acknowledge my uh, co-authors, uh, Patrick Hunt and Ariel Soji from uh, Florence, South Carolina, as well as uh, international cooperators, Jose Martinez, Ayrton Combs from Embrapa, uh, Dr. Fuji and Furukawa from Japan, that helped me uh, in the development of the Anamox uh, process. Uh, today I'm going to speak about two uh, technologies using uh, biological uh, removal of nitrogen. Uh, one is uh, nitrification, denitrification, and uh, one that uh, we're now developing is the anamox uh, based deammonification. Uh, why is that we want to remove nitrogen uh, from animal manure? Uh, the problem is that in many areas, in the world, uh, we have uh, surplus nitrogen and also uh, ammonia emissions. And uh, there is a need for technologies that can remove the excess uh, nitrogen. Uh, for uh, the first uh, technology that I'm going to speak is about the uh, nitrification, the nitrification, where we convert ammonia into uh, nitrogen gas. Uh, we uh, tested this in uh, many uh, full-scale uh, projects. Uh, we developed a second-generation system about uh, five years ago. And uh, in there, in, in these slides, you see uh, the treatment of uh, the waste from uh, 5,200 pigs in North Carolina. Uh, we used, uh, before, uh, using nitrification and nitrification, we use uh, solid liquid separation, and in this project, we apply polymer to remove the suspended solids and leave a liquid with ammonia, and then we use uh, nitrification and uh, nitrification. Um, what is the nitrification and nitrification? This is a biological process where uh, the ammonia is uh, first oxidized to uh, nitride and uh, nitrate, and we apply uh, oxygen. And then it goes into an anaerobic phase, where in the combination with uh, organic carbon, it goes into uh, nitrogen uh, gas. And uh, uh, the issue of how much carbon uh, you have in the system uh, defines uh, what you can do with the nitrification and nitrification. Um, this is the schematic of the system uh, that we use. Uh, we uh, flush uh, the manure into some mixing tank. Uh, the uh, water, or the waste water, goes through solid liquid separation. And then, uh, without the solids, the uh, waste water goes into this cycle of uh, nitrification and nitrification. In order to use the natural carbon in the manure, uh, we use a pre-anoxic biological uh, model uh, called the modified Lussac Ettlinger system, where we have a denitrification first, a nitrification, and the, we continually recycle between both tanks. And that way, we use the natural carbon in the manure for the denitrification. Uh, in this system, all the excess uh, biological slash, as well as the phosphate that we recover, uh, we mix it with the manure, and the manure leaves the farm for a composting uh, operation to generate value-added <coughs> products. Um, this is an aerial picture of the uh, second generation, where we have uh, the denitrification and nitrification tank, and we continually uh, recycle between uh, both tanks. Uh, the recycling time for this system is about uh, four days. Uh, recently, we complete a third generation system. Uh, the uh, system was tested full scale in 2012. And uh, uh, we treat the manure from uh, two farms. Uh, it was a complete system with uh, 1,200 uh, so far to finish uh, operation. Uh, it produced 30,500 uh, hogs per year. And uh, uh, we use the same model of uh, solid separation. Uh, what you have here is uh, the soft farm and the finishing farm. And these are uh, the lagoons that we're trying to replace. So the two lagoons here are replaced with this uh, system that is shown in the middle with tanks. And they are 
we do a solid separation, a nitrification, the nitrification, and also we remove uh, the phosphorus. In this system, uh, we try to lower the cost by incorporating uh, settling uh, before polymer application to be much more effective in the application of the polymer. Uh, when uh, we try to lower the cost of the system, we look at uh, the biology. So uh, already in the second generation system that we tested about five years ago, uh, we incorporated a new an nitrification bacteria slash that was acclimated uh, to low temperatures. And in this system, uh, the temperature, uh, since it's a biological process, the temperature uh, defines the size of the tanks. So, so if you have a system that is well adapted to lower temperatures, uh, you can uh, provide a, a smaller uh, footprint. Uh, the, uh, a slash, we call it a high performance uh, nitrifying slash, HPNS. It was isolated from manure. It showed uh, high activity at low temperatures. When uh, higher slashes uh, fail at the low temperature, uh, this slash was very effective. And uh, we use this slash to start quickly a full scale plant. Um, the slash has been deposited in the uh, agricultural research collection in uh, Peoria, Illinois. Uh, to start up the plant, uh, we uh, seed the uh, nitrification tank, about 60,000 gallons, uh, with uh, one liter of this uh, uh, HPNS slash. And in, in about uh, 40 days, it get to the uh, treatment level of 100 kilograms of ammonia removal uh, per day. That is about the nitrogen that we need to remove in a five to 6,000 big operation. Um, one of uh, the things that uh, we tried to work in the development of this technology was uh, the uh, simplicity from the point of view of operation. Uh, the system is uh, simple to operate. Uh, the operator about once a week uh, measure how much uh, biomass is in, in the tank, and uh, based on that, uh, he said the operation parameters of wasting more or less slash, and uh, that is all the management that is required for these kind of systems. Uh, what kind of ammonia removal we got is uh, about 95% of the nitrogen that is removed in this system, uh, I'm sorry, uh, of the nitrogen that uh, enters into the system, it's about, uh, this is after solid separation, about 1,100 uh, parts per million, we remove about 95%. Uh, um, the system uh, operates uh, about the same uh, either uh, in the summer months or in the cold uh, weather months. Um, uh, Dr. Amnesia, in uh, the first generation uh, system, uh, he measured the uh, ammonia emissions, and he compared the ammonia emissions uh, by this system compared with the uh, traditional uh, anaerobic uh, lagoon technology. And uh, uh, he got 95% uh, uh, in the warm season and 99% in the cold uh, season. This is uh, a measure of, of ammonia emissions. And uh, so uh, when you remove about more than 90% of the nitrogen uh, in the wastewater, uh, you have about the same uh, reduction in the ammonia emissions. Uh, one thing that we did in one of the projects was uh, going to the barn and measure uh, how much nitrogen uh, was uh, inside the barns. And uh, in the air system, uh, they use uh, the lagoon liquid uh, to flush the barns. Uh, in the new system, uh, we use the treated water with maybe 10 parts per million of ammonia versus 600 or 700 parts per million of ammonia here. And by doing that, uh, we were able to reduce the uh, ammonia concentration in the bars. And uh, for about uh, 10 cycles, uh, we measure, uh, big production cycles, we measure uh, the, the production of uh, the farm. 
and uh, we measure uh, five years before conversion and five years, I'm sorry, five cycles. Uh, each cycle is about 5,200 pigs in uh, seven barns, and uh, we measure before and after. And uh, uh, the mortality uh, was cut in half for this farm, and uh, uh, the pigs uh, grew uh, faster. Uh, they, they do much better in terms of health. And the farmer sold uh, 61,000 more pounds per growing cycle because of this change in management of the waste. Uh, the second uh, technology that uh, I would like to talk is uh, the deammonification. And uh, deammonification is a new term uh, that we use for uh, the combination of uh, partial nitritation and anamox combination. And uh, because it's an autotrophic process, it is best suited for uh, digested, digested effluents. Um, this is uh, all kind of combination that uh, you can get with biological and uh, nitrogen removal processes. Uh, the previous uh, part of the presentation, we were looking at this type of system where we try to use the carbon after solid separation, the soluble carbon that is not separated by solid separation. And uh, during this uh, recirculation, uh, we try to uh, convert the uh, nitrate to nitrogen uh, gas. Uh, but what happens when you do an aerobic digestion? Uh, you use all the carbon to produce the biogas, and you're left with a lot of ammonia in the liquid, but no carbon. So uh, one uh, solution will be to apply uh, an external source of carbon like methanol, which is expensive. Uh, a much cheaper solution is uh, this process of anamox that does not need uh, carbon. Uh, how does uh, the anamox work? Uh, we would combine uh, ammonia with nitrate, nitrate, and uh, that uh, is processed into nitrogen gas by uh, this uh, bacteria. Uh, we uh, discover a new bacteria a species, Brocaia carabiniensis, uh, that does uh, the anamox uh, process, and it was isolated uh, from soil manure in North Carolina. Uh, if you see uh, this combination, uh, you can see that uh, the process will require half the oxygen that uh, you have in a traditional uh, nitrification, uh, the nitrification. So this is a new shortcut for the biological uh, removal of nitrogen. Uh, the anamox biomass uh, was grown in a parent reactor in uh, Florence, uh, South Carolina. Uh, similar to uh, the other slash, uh, we uh, deposited uh, the bacteria slash in the uh, USDA agricultural research collection in Peoria, Illinois. But we use the slash from this parent reactor to start and see other experiments. Uh, in the first uh, type of work that we did with wastewater, uh, we use uh, the process separated into tanks, a partial nitritation, where we only oxidize half of the ammonia. And then uh, we provide uh, chambers or reactors uh, in a totally uh, closed anaerobic environment uh, with the anamox bacteria, and there uh, we produce uh, the nitrogen gas, and we treat the effluent. Uh, this is a picture of a work that we did about two years ago uh, with uh, a two-stage process where we have uh, partial uh, nitritation of uh, manure contain about uh, 1,400 parts per million of ammonia. And uh, then uh, we provide this uh, closed uh, reactor with the anamox bacteria uh, to reduce, uh, to combine nitrite and ammonia into uh, nitrogen gas. Uh, things are changing, and uh, the way that uh, we look at this process uh, is different uh, in the last uh, year, at least. Um, uh, in 2010, uh, we were handling uh, this bacteria always under uh, anaerobic uh, condition. Uh, the name uh, 
uh, anaerobic oxidation of ammonia, you know, um, that is what we thought that we need to be doing. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, we uh, provided uh, closed chambers uh, to grow uh, the bacteria. But uh, uh, about uh, two years ago, uh, we started with uh, a new way of doing things, and uh, we combined uh, the, the passion nitritation and the animox all into one tank that is the continuous flow aerated reactor, and we provide air. Uh, we will provide uh, some uh, uh, plastic uh, carriers uh, to help the bacteria develop uh, biofilms. About 30% of the tank is filled with these uh, plastic carriers. And then uh, we mix uh, the two uh, cultures, and uh, uh, that is uh, the new uh, process. Uh, to start uh, the, the ammonification process, uh, we combine uh, the HPNS, nitrification sludge, with the anamox sludge, and then uh, we start ideation, and uh, all the, the ammonification is done in just uh, one time, which has some uh, economic benefits. Um, we uh, uh, set up uh, a reactor. Uh, here you have the a single tank. Uh, where we perform uh, uh, removal of ammonia. Uh, we started also a second uh, reactor about a year ago, also with uh, good results. Uh, this is a type of ammonia uh, removal that we get. Um, in uh, phase one, we were uh, feeding uh, synthetic wastewater, inorganic synthetic wastewater. And then uh, in phase two, uh, we switched to uh, swine uh, wastewater and uh, uh, the reactor assimilated very well uh, this change and efficiently uh, removed uh, the ammonia. Um, this is uh, another uh, uh, performance uh, test for, for the bacteria. We see the ammonia quickly being uh, removed. And uh, this is an aggregated reactor, and uh, uh, we consume the alkalinity. And uh, the process produces about 10% uh, of the nitrogen uh, we have uh, nitrate uh, production. So, so this is uh, the type of uh, stoichiometry that was obtained with this uh, single tank. Uh, uh, the removal is very high, about uh, one kilogram of nitrogen per cubic meter of reactor per day, and uh, we can remove the ammonia uh, very efficiently uh, from uh, digested uh, swine uh, wastewater. Uh, we look also at the theory and what kind of reaction we obtain uh, to see what kind of what is the significance of this uh, reaction. Uh, here you have uh, the theory of combining uh, partial nitrification and anamox, just uh, by running numbers of how uh, the process uh, should look. And uh, uh, in here we show uh, the uh, stoichiometry that uh, we got in practice with two reactors. Uh, and what is the significance of this equation? Is that uh, the amount of air uh, compared uh, with traditional nitrification and nitrification uh, is cut uh, from 2 to 0.85 mole of oxygen per mole of ammonia. Uh, this means that uh, we can remove uh, nitrogen with the biological process uh, with uh, 50 seven percent uh, less uh, oxygen requirement. And also we can do the same uh, without uh, adding uh, carbon. So uh, the ammonification uh, treatment compared with the uh, nitrification and nitrification uh, is uh, quick and efficient. Uh, we don't need uh, carbon, so it's especially suited for anaerobic uh, digesters. Uh, and uh, the aeration means are reduced uh, by 57% uh, compared with uh, traditional nitrification and nitrification. Uh, as a conclusion, um, the nitrification and nitrification of soil wastewater was optimized after soil liquid separation by using a pre anoxic design and a high performance nitrifying sludge. And uh, we found uh, more recently that a single tank, the ammonification with uh, Anamox uh, is feasible, and it may be a key technology for uh, the removal 
of ammonia and systems that consume the carbon for any energy production. Um, with this, Um, uh, the question is, uh, with the anamox reaction, we need to manage uh, the alkalinity, or do we add alkali? Um, we didn't, uh, with the uh, sun waste water, uh, we didn't need uh, to add uh, any uh, supplement. Uh, the anamox reaction itself does not uh, consume significant uh, alkalinity, but the partial uh, nitrification uh, does consume uh, in the same way that uh, you will predict it. But since we only uh, consume uh, 50 percent or transform 50 percent of the ammonia to, to nitrite, uh, we require half of the alkalinity that we require if you do a traditional nitrification uh, than nitrification. So uh, in summary, uh, we don't add alkali. And it's uh, perfect for anaerobic digestion. We don't have a uh, problem with alkalinity. How long is the startup time? How long you can be started for the reactor? The ammonification reactor? Um, we uh, had instant uh, starting. Uh, we uh, mix the two slashes, and the next day we start collecting data. So, uh, the uh, secret will be uh, how to start with uh, a volume of, uh, of uh, uh, bacteria. Uh, we have uh, in the laboratory two uh, reactors producing uh, the slash. So, so uh, all we're doing is mixing these two slashes, and immediately uh, we start the reaction. Now, uh, if uh, uh, we have to start a real plant like we did with uh, the nitrification, the nitrification, uh, we will have uh, probably uh, uh, a couple of months uh, to get uh, to full, full scale.